Cat Synth TV. Hey everybody, Cat Synth TV, and today we are looking at the Plectrum module from Morphor. This is an analog implementation of the Carpless Strong method for plex sounds. Now before we continue, we should explain a bit about the Carpless Strong string synthesis algorithm. Basically, it's a feedback loop with a short tunable delay and a low pass filter. When you send a short burst of noise into the feedback loop, its natural decay leads to a sound reminiscent of a plex string. One controls the pitch of the sound with the time parameter of the delay, with the delay length being calculated based on the desired pitch and the sample rate. The cutoff frequency changes the timbre of the plex sound, and together with its amplitude affects the decay or length of the overall sound. This is perhaps one of the simplest examples of physical modeling or digital waveguide synthesis. We've already looked at a few instruments in the past that implement Carpless Strong, including the Mutable Instruments Platts and the Arturia Microfreak. The Morphor Plectrum is an all-analog implementation of the algorithm. It uses a bucket brigade delay and a one-pole low-pass filter for the feedback loop, and it has a simple set of controls for playing, shaping, and modifying the plux sound. Trigger is a gate function that turns the noise on and off to start the sound. There is a standard 1V per octave pitch control. There is a knob in CV for tuning the overall pitch. Feedback controls the rate of decay for the algorithm. Longer feedback means longer decay, and thus a longer plucked tone. Color controls the cutoff frequency of the low-pass filter, making the sound brighter or duller. Of course we have an audio output. Now we also have what is called the Carpless Strong Loop Extender. Here you can tap into the feedback loop and send the signal to another module, and then back in here. If you set the switch to external, the filter will be bypassed, and the loop will include whatever external signal you set up. Okay, so now we've attached our Plectrum module to our QNexus controller to play it. The pitch CV from the QNexus is attached to the pitch control of the Plectrum. The gate from the QNexus is driving an envelope generator, which is sent to the trigger input. Right now we have a very short envelope to create a short attack for our plex sound. Let's try it out now. Turn down the feedback for a shorter plex sound. Bring it back up a bit. A bit more. Now if you turn the feedback up too much, you get runaway feedback like we're hearing now. Dial it back a bit. As mentioned, color controls the cutoff frequency of the low-pass filter for the feedback loop. Turning it to the right provides a brighter sound, and to the left we close the filter for a darker sound. Yeah, the plectrum is great for bass sounds like that. If we turn color all the way down, we get more of a percussion sound. Bring it back up. Now the perceptual length and decay of the sound are controlled by the combination of color and feedback. The higher the cutoff frequency, the longer the decay will ring at a particular feedback level. It takes some finesse to dial in a particular sound that you want. We have the tuning knob, which lets us change the overall pitch range of the instrument. Now so far we've only been feeding in very short triggers, leading to a very short percussive attack for the sound. We can increase the attack and decay of our envelope to bring in a longer noise burst, and get a softer but richer transient. 
increase the attack and decay a bit more. Sort of a percussive, spiccato bowed sound. We can turn the color back up. As you can hear, we can just sustain the noise for a very unstring-like sound. Now as short as possible. I think it's good to have a little length in the trigger. The Plectrum has several additional CV inputs. For example, we can dynamically control the color using the Velocity CV from our Q-Nexus keyboard. It adds a bit of expressivity when playing. We also have a CV input that allows us to dynamically control the pitch, even after a trigger. I'm going to attach the pressure CV from the Q-Nexus, allowing us to bend the pitch. We can also attach an oscillator to the CV input, like generator 2 from the adjacent Sputnik dual oscillator. This will give us FM timbres out of the plectrum. The CV is a little temperamental with audio rate input, so it requires a bit of trial and error. Okay, so now we're going to patch an external module into the loop. Set the switch to external to bypass the built-in filter. We take the output tap here and connect it to the input on our Rossum Electro Music Morpheus Z-Plane filter. We then route the output from the Morpheus back into the Plectrum. The Morpheus is currently set to a low-pass flange program, so we should get a much flangier plux sound.
Now, of course, there's no way I'm not going to try it with one of these Metasonics modules over here. Let's route the loop signal from the plectrum through our R54 Super Module. Move the filter knob to just past the calibration point, and dial everything in just so. We get this sort of ringing ping sound with our pluck, a bit like harmonics or maybe even a prepared guitar. With these Metasonics modules, it's a fine line between a ringing filter and self-oscillation. In this last demo, we connect the plectrum to our Make Noise Rene. We take the pitch out of the Rene and connect it to the 1V per octave CV control, and we connect gate X to the envelope into our trigger. We hope that you've enjoyed this brief but detailed look at the Morpho Plectrum module. To find out more, please visit their website and check out the description below this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.